Okay, we'll go ahead and get started um, and let others join as they're able. Uh, my name is Jenny Needler. I'm the Director of Pro Bono and Policy at the Commission on Immigration, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Thanks for joining us. This webinar is sponsored by the ABA Section of Civil Rights and Social Justice and the Commission on Immigration, and is one of a series of rapid response webinars. Uh, CRSJ is actively planning additional programming on a variety of issues. So please visit AmericanBar.org slash CRSJ for updates. During today's program, we ask that you please post your questions using the Q&A function rather than the chat function. Uh, we'll be monitoring the Q&A function during the webinar. And if you don't see the controls for some reason, please ensure that your screen isn't idle, but the Q&A can be found at the bottom center of your screen. We're also going to be sharing a recording of the webinar and a copy of the PowerPoint. You'll receive that by email within a couple days of the session. It will also be available on YouTube. That way, all of you who registered for the program can go back and view it at your leisure and also review the PowerPoint and other materials that we'll be sharing with you. Today, we're going to be talking about um, an exciting new program. It's the launch of a federal page on the ABA Free Legal Answers website. Free Legal Answers operates kind of like a virtual walk-in clinic where income eligible individuals can post legal questions on the site and licensed attorneys provide free responses. The federal page of Free Legal Answers will enable users to ask questions about veterans and immigration law. The, the site is currently open for attorney volunteers to register to answer questions on the site, but it's not yet open for users to, act, to act, pose questions. Our hope um, as of today, which is if you're viewing this live is uh, December 8th of 2020. Our hope is that the site will be available for users to pose questions in January of 2021. Uh, but the site is already open to uh, attorney volunteers and we hope very much that all of you will sign up to volunteer. Before I provide you with more background information on the website, I'm gonna introduce today's panelists. Um, after my Short introduction to the history of FLA, I will introduce Josh, Jocelyn Dyer, who is Senior Pro Bono Counsel with the Immigration Justice Campaign. And she will talk about the American Immigration Lawyers Association partnership with the ABA on the federal immigration page. The campaign is a joint initiative of AILA and the American Immigration Council. After we hear from Jocelyn, I will turn it over to my ABA colleagues, Mary Meixner and Rachel Durham, who will talk to you about the programs of the ABA Standing Committee on Legal Assistance for Military Personnel and the opportunity for those who are credited with the, with the VA to volunteer to answer veterans questions on the FLA federal site. And then finally, I'll turn it over to Karen Grise, who is the site administrator, administrator for the immigration page. And she's gonna walk you all through how to register to volunteer on the site and also how to navigate the site once you signed up to volunteer in terms of finding questions and finding technical or substantive information that you might, might need um, in order to help you. We do plan to leave time for questions, so please post any questions in the Q&A function on the site. There are some questions that we might be able to answer during the webinar as, as folks are talking, but we will make every effort to get to your questions at least at the end. So I'm gonna start by sharing my screen with you all and giving you a little bit of background on the site itself. So what is Free Legal Answers? Free Legal Answers is a project of the ABA Standing Committee on Pro Bono and Public Service. A form of Free Legal Answers started in 2016 with a Tennessee site that is now merged into Free Legal Answers. And Free Legal Answers is now expanded to almost 40 states that have their own individual sites. What happens is that attorney volunteers like yourselves sign up with the state site where they're licensed and then qualifying users in that state post civil legal questions on the site. Criminal questions are, are not permitted. Um, and then why have we decided to launch a federal page? So far we only have uh, sites for 40 individual states. So now we're starting uh, a site for federal law questions. Well, the pandemic has showed all of us that there is an increased need not only for remote pro bono services, but also that more and more attorneys are working from home now and maybe doing more so in the future. 
It also helps to fill the justice gap by providing reliable legal information to underserved populations in a remote setting. And as I've said before, the, this initial site launch will allow users to ask questions about immigration and veterans law. As I said, it's like a virtual walk-in clinic. The ABA provides the online platform, malpractice insurance for any work you do through the site, as well as a national site administrator who helps to manage the site. And also the IT infrastructure is provided by the firm of Baker Donaldson who handles any IT issues that may come up. Attorney volunteers and users both need to register for the site in order to be able to use it. Users are pre-screened for financial eligibility, so you don't need to worry about whether someone is eligible to ask questions on the site that will already have been determined. And people who are told they don't qualify for the site for some reason are redirected automatically to a page that has additional places where they might be able to find assistance. And that page has been tailored specifically to people who are likely to have veterans and immigration law questions. When you register for the site, you can sign up to answer immigration questions, veterans questions, or both. You can also volunteer to answer questions in certain categories. Uh, we've divided up the veterans and immigration law sections into multiple categories. I've listed some of the sample immigration questions below. So if you happen to specialize in one or more areas of immigration law, you can choose to just sign up for those categories so that you'll only see questions that are posed in those categories. There also is a catch-all other category for both immigration and veterans where users feel that their question doesn't otherwise fit naturally in one of the subject areas. The site administrator, which is for immigration, Karen Grise or myself, or for veterans, Mary or Rachel, will confirm your bar admission and other qualifications. For example, as Rachel will explain in more detail, you need to be accredited by the VA to answer veterans questions on the site. And we ask you to tell us whether you are an AILA member if you sign up to answer immigration questions. You can still volunteer if you're not an AILA member, but if you are an AILA member, we'll automatically assume that you're qualified to answer questions on the site. If you're not a member, we'll just ask you to provide us a little information about your experience in immigration law. As we said, malpractice insurance is provided to volunteers for work done through the site. Users log in using their own unique login information. They pose a question and they you know, wait for a response and users are able to upload documents to the site. So you know, if they've got a notice from CIS or an NTA to appear in immigration court, they can upload that and show it directly to you. Also, one of the best things about this is both users and volunteers can literally be anywhere from their home to work, to a library, to an airport terminal. Um, all you need to participate is an internet connection. And you choose which questions you wanna answer as a volunteer. Once you select a question, a uh, limited scope representation it, situation is created between you and the user, just like if you were volunteering at a Saturday morning pro bono clinic or something like that. The representation extends only to answering the question. Also, as an attorney volunteer, if you feel like you need more information from the user in order to answer the question, you can respond asking for follow up information. For example, you know, if someone says, oh, someone filed a family petition for me and I don't know what happened and now I'm in immigration court, but they don't attach the petition papers. You can ask them to upload that if they have access to them. In addition to malpractice coverage, uh, one of the best benefits of volunteering is the flexibility. Uh, you choose when, where, and how often to volunteer. You choose questions you wanna answer and that you feel qualified to answer based on your experience. You can sign up to answer a question and then come back to it after doing some initial research. You can also return a question to the queue if you decide not to answer it. If, for example, you decide to answer a question and then get a surprise hearing notice and find you don't have the time, you can return it to the queue and someone else can pick it up to answer. And another big, big bonus is that you remain anonymous to the user on the site unless for some reason you choose to provide your, your contact information. So all they'll see is that you're a volunteer attorney. They won't see your name or contact information. 
Another benefit is a short-term commitment. If you want to provide pro bono services, but you're not sure you have the time to take on a full case, uh, this enables you to provide a few hours of assistance that can really mean a lot to an individual person, but doesn't entail a long-term commitment from you. It's also a way to help the low-income immigrant community and combat notario fraud for people who might otherwise not have a, have a reputable place to go for brief advice. We also have training and resources available on the site, as Karen will show you, both for tech issues that might come up, as well as substantive areas and places to go to get more information. You can agree with the user to enter into a separate relationship uh, pro bono by providing them with longer term representation. If you decide to do that, we ask that you inform the site administrators so that we can keep track of that information. Um, and there's a link that will uh, enable you to do that on the site. But you're not permitted to enter into a fee-based representation agreement with a user that you encounter on the site. As Karen will show you, you also can track your hours on the site. So if you need to report them for your firm or for some other purpose, uh, you'll be able to track your hours as you work. There are also some states that provide CLE credit for volunteer work, such as volunteering with Free Legal Answers. Um, in the frequently asked question for attorneys document that Karen will show you on the page, it provides a link to an ABA page that lists those states that provide CLE credit for volunteer work. The ABA also annually recognizes pro bono leaders for FLA, and you can also identify yourself as an FLA volunteer on your firm website or your email signature line. So before uh, my colleagues speak about the veteran site, um, I want to um, ask Jocelyn to join us. Uh, we're very excited at the Commission on Immigration to be partnering with AILA for the Fe FLA Federal Immigration Site. And we'd like Jocelyn to tell you all a little bit more about um, why the campaign and AILA have decided to partner with us in this effort. Welcome, Jocelyn. Sure, thank you, Jenny. Um, and thank you to everyone who's participating. Um, Again, I'm Senior Pro Bono Counsel at the American Immigration Lawyers Association, um, and I work on ALA National's pro bono initiatives, including the Immigration Justice Campaign. Um, we are really excited to be offering ALA members this volunteer opportunity through the ABA. Um, we think that the Free Legal Answers website is a great resource for the public. Um, you know, it's so important for people who are seeking immigration advice to be able to get accurate answers to their questions, especially uh, during the midst of the pandemic, when legal service providers might have more restricted um, hours and intake and availability. Um, so this is really filling a critical need at a critical time. Um, and from the volunteers perspective, this is just a wonderful way to be able to give back in a way that fits your own schedule um, and availability, uh, especially during these stressful and busy times. Um, you know, some people might not have the opportunity to volunteer or the availability to volunteer on a full case um, or application right now. And so this is a way to engage in limited scope pro bono work. Um, you know, you can hop on and answer a question whenever it's convenient for you. Um, you can answer as many or as few questions as you want. So it's truly um, a flexible opportunity uh, for immigration attorneys. Um, also, as I'm sure you'll be hearing from my colleagues at the ABA, um, the site you know, has been designed with ALA volunteers in mind, um, as long as you are an ALA member and a member of a state bar in good standing, um, you are welcome to volunteer um, and to answer questions. Um, so thanks again for, for joining today and thank you to the ABA for hosting this training and extending this volunteer opportunity um, to ALA members. Thanks so much, Jocelyn. I'm now going to welcome uh, my colleagues um, Mary Meixner, who is the Chief Counsel of the ABA Standing Committee on Legal Assistance to Military Personnel, and Rachel Durham, who's the Military Pro Bono Coordinator of the ABA's Military Pro Bono Project. And they're going to speak with you more about their work at the ABA, as well as the veterans portion of this federal site. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again so that I can um, show you their information. 
Okay. Great, thanks so much. Well, like she just said, I'm, my name is Mary Meixner. I'm the director of the ABA Military and Veterans Legal Center along with counsel for the Standing Committee on Legal Assistance for Military Personnel, otherwise known as the LAMP Committee. So while today's webinar will mostly focus on the Federal Free Legal Answers website for immigration issues, uh, again, if you visit the website, you'll find that uh, the federal website also includes veterans issues. So we just wanna take a few minutes to talk about this, who we are and uh, what we do. So just briefly, the, the LAMP committee. Uh, LAMP's work and initiatives support the legal needs of military personnel while, not, while on active duty, but as well as uh, their transition from active duty to veteran status. Uh, the committee collaborates closely with the military on the adoption and implementation of policy in the area of legal assistance and uh, we engage directly with uh, military legal assistance attorneys along with the civilian bar to provide education but along with this we have innovative programs uh, to improve access to justice for service members uh, their families and veterans so uh, LAMP's active uh, innovative programs include the ABA Military Pro Bono Project. Uh, this program actually has a lot of similarities to the uh, American Immigration Lawyers Association's Military Assistance Program, um, except that the Military Pro Bono Project focuses on all civil legal areas outside of immigration. So of course, we're not duplicating each other's efforts. Um, also, Operation Standby, and Rachel will talk about both of these a little bit more. But with our experience with these, uh, with these innovative programs, uh, when we had the opportunity to uh, jump onto this Free Legal Answers federal website to focus on veterans, uh, we were very excited about this opportunity. The LAMP is uh, very grateful for this opportunity to collaborate with the Standing Committee on Pro Bono and Public Services along with the Commission on Immigration uh, for this new extension uh, for uh, federal free legal answers. So we're happy to bring our experience with other programs into this uh, extension of this program. Um, so um, Rachel Durham, the LAMP's Military Pro Bono Coordinator, uh, she'll give you a, a, she'll quickly provide you with some information about these programs. And of course, our involvement with the uh, new Free Legal Answers uh, website. So I'll turn it over to you, Rachel. Thank you, Mary. Um, could we go to the next slide, please, Jenny? Thank you. Uh, again, my name is Rachel Durham and I am the Military Pro Bono Coordinator for the ABA Military Pro Bono Project. And I'll also be serving as the uh, site administrator for the new Federal Free Legal Answers for the veteran side. Um, so as Mary noted, LAMP has been managing pro bono initiatives for quite some time, so we are happy to have this opportunity with Free Legal Answers expansion. Um, as a quick note, one of our longstanding initiatives is the ABA Military Pro Bono Project. Um, and again, as Mary mentioned, uh, the project is similar to AILA's Military Assistance Program, if you're familiar with that program, except for that we take cases for non-immigration related civil legal issues. So the project accepts case referrals from military legal assistance attorneys located anywhere in the world on behalf of junior enlisted active duty military uh, service members facing civil legal issues. And then we work to place these cases with pro bono attorneys uh, who offer to help where the legal assistance is needed in the United States. So our cases involve um, a variety of civil legal issues, including family law matters, uh, credit and consumer issues, uh, landlord tenant disputes, guardianship cases, and uh, more. Uh, we also have an initiative called Operation Standby that uh, Mary previously mentioned, um, through which civilian attorneys may volunteer to offer lawyer to lawyer consultations to both military and pro bono civilian attorneys in need of guidance so that they can further help their service member clients. Um, so if you'd like to learn more about either the ABA Military Pro Bono Project or Operation Standby, you can do so on our website, www.militaryprobono.org. Um, and otherwise, uh, so what these programs don't do is include services for veterans. So again, I just want to echo Mary's excitement about this opportunity to work with Free Legal Answers uh, to provide assistance to veterans. 
So uh, ABA Free Legal Answers, Federal Free Legal Answers for veterans will allow veterans as well as their eligible dependents and survivors to ask questions about a variety of issues that affect veterans. Uh, so for example, this will include uh, topics such as VA benefits. Uh, and these are benefits that are provided to veterans by the Department of uh, Veterans Affairs. Uh, the VA provides a variety of different benefits to veterans depending on when they served or if they were injured, for example. Uh, so again, for example, if a service member was injured uh, while serving, they can apply for VA disability benefits. Um, also, depending on how, how long and when they served, uh, veterans may also be eligible for pension from the VA. So these are just some examples of different uh, VA benefits that veterans will be able to ask questions about. Um, another area that veterans can ask questions about is discharge upgrades. So if you are unfamiliar, service members are given a status between honorable and dishonorable uh, when they are discharged from the military. And there are several statuses in between those two statuses. Um, and uh, veterans may want to apply for discharge upgrades to upgrade their discharge status in order to be, for example, eligible for those VA benefits that I just mentioned. Um, or perhaps because uh, they have a less than honorable discharge status, maybe from something like, uh, you know, the circumstances around their discharge were related to, again, for example, sexual orientation, if they were discharged during don't ask, don't tell. Um, so there are a variety of reasons someone may want to upgrade their discharge status, um, and there are a couple of different ways to go about that, uh, depending on what the veteran wants to achieve or the circumstances around their discharge. So they will be able to ask questions about that process and eligibility and things like that, again, on uh, this new Free Little Answers platform, uh, in addition to other topics affecting veterans as well. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So if you are interested in potentially answering veterans questions, we also uh, require that our volunteers are licensed and in good standing in their state. Um, uh, but we also require that volunteers are accredited with the Department of Veterans Affairs or the VA uh, in order to answer questions from veterans. Um, so if you uh, go to our website and you register, uh, we will ask that you provide your VA accreditation number when you register along with your license number for the state that you're licensed in. Um, and Karen will talk more about those numbers later uh, in the webinar. Um, to find out more about VA accreditation, I will share a link in the chat here um, for anyone that may be interested. And other than that, that is all that I have. And just one note for me too, actually getting VA accreditation, it might take a few weeks to get it, but it's very easy. It's a matter of filling out a form and, uh, and uh, showing that you are uh, licensed in a state. So if you're interested, don't be intimidated just by VA accreditation. So thank you. Thank, you. Uh, thank you so much, Mary and Rachel. Uh, it's been really nice to work with both of you in um, getting this site launched. And we're really, really excited to be working uh, with our veterans colleagues um, and with the Standing Committee on Pro Bono in this effort. And I'm now gonna turn things over to Karen. Uh, as I'm sure many of you know, Karen wears many, many hats in her life, <laughs> including ALA Pro Bono Committee member and a member of the ABA Commission on Immigration. But today she is joining us in her capacity as, as administrator of the immigration page of the FLA federal site. And she's gonna walk us through how to go about registering and then how to navigate the site uh, once you are registered as an attorney. So take it away, Karen. Okay, thank you very much, Jenny. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? Um, here, uh, I've given you um, just a few words here on what I hope to do during this session. Before we launch into it, I do wanna say though, thanks to everybody for spending this much time this afternoon. Thanks for being here and for your interest in volunteering with Federal Free Legal Answers. Um, what I hope to do in this presentation is take you through a, um, a bit of a deeper dive onto the Federal FLA Immigration Site. Um, show you what's there, show you what resources are there for you if you do volunteer. The reason I've put this part first is actually because um, 
you can't see it on the live site until you register. So I wanna give you a bit of an overview first to try to give you a comfort level. And then I'll um, take you through the volunteer registration part at the end. So we're gonna to tour the demonstration site, talk about the features of the site, and then the volunteer registration towards the end. Okay, next one, Jenny. Um, here, this one, um, you'll be getting this slide, as you heard, when you get the PowerPoint uh, after the presentation within a day or two. We don't want you to log on to this now, but I just want you to see that there is a way to access the demo site. So if you want to double check or review anything that I talk about in this presentation today, um, here's how you get onto it to check out the demo site for yourself. Okay, next one, Jenny, please. Um, so uh, exploring the tabs, we're going to go into the demo site itself for a moment. What I want to do here is just highlight for you some of the questions you are going to, um, some of the questions, some of the features that you are going to see to sort of um, pique your interest and hope that anything in which you're particularly interested, you pay attention. And then if you have follow up questions, we'll get to those in the Q&A time. So you'll see there's a contact us tab that takes you to the site administrators for technical support. There's a landing page where the question queue, the, the user's questions are actually posted. You can get a question, uh, a history of the questions that you've already answered. Your profile, which only you have control of, and that will display the information that you put in at the time that you register. So go ahead, Jenny, next one, please. Um, FAQ tab, there's tons of information here. Um, this tab basically talks about the way the site actually works. Um, first thing is information about client users. As you heard, the, um, you don't have to worry about financial eligibility because it's already been determined before the user is able to register on a site. But that you'll see on this FAQ, in case you're curious, the percent of poverty level, the asset information, and the confirmation that the person is not serving a criminal sentence. They may be in immigration detention, but they can't actively be serving a criminal sentence. Um, question limit, users normally can ask across the entire FLA um, platform up to three questions a year, but during the pandemic, recognizing that people may have more legal needs than usual and fewer places to get them answered, that's temporarily been increased to five questions a year. But I wanna note, because you heard a bit about the opportunity to go back and forth, ask the user for a document or provide some additional information, responding to those follow-ups or asking you more clarification on an answer that you gave does not count against the user as a new question. These three and five limit um, uh, values are for uh, entirely independent questions. Um, another feature here, client users are not guaranteed an answer. Any questions that don't get answered by any volunteer during 30 days will be closed by the site administrator. Um, one thing I'll point out when we go through it though, that um, if you select a question, you should consider then whether you need more research or you can actually get back and answer it quickly because once you take it into your own queue, as we'll see, other potential volunteers can't see it. So you have all the control, but we don't want you to uh, prevent others from seeing a question that they may um, be willing to answer. Okay, next one, Jenny, please. Um, here, there's information for volunteer attorneys here still under the Q&A tab. You'll see it walks you through again how you um, can register the practice area selection that's choosing veterans or immigration. Um, behind the scenes, your state bar admission and your good standing will be verified by the site administrators. Um, it is limited scope representation, and that's explained here under this volunteer attorney information. That is exactly like a walk-in clinic. Your, um, you do form an attorney-client relationship with the duty of confidentiality and all, all the other requirements of that, but it's limited to the time that you're working on the platform and answering the question. So um, 
if that may be five minutes. If you have back and forth over a couple of days, it may be a couple of days. But when you finish and close out the question, that representation has come to an end. You will get uh, weekly reminders if you register for the site about um, questions that you've selected and not answered. Um, so that, as I say, you'll have a chance to um, go back in and either return it to the queue if you've realized it's really not in your area or you don't have time to deal with it, or um, if, uh, if for any other reason you decide that you're unable to do it, back to the queue it goes so someone else can work on it. There are other emails that you'll get if you register for the site, and those will flag for you, hi, um, there are cases in categories that you selected waiting in the queue um, in your in individual interest area. There are a couple of cases approaching a deadline, something like that. So you'll, you'll get a reminder when there are a lot of questions waiting for answers or questions to which you may want to pay particular attention. Um, you'll see a tab for conflicts, and again, I'll illustrate this. Every lawyer, just like you are in any other situation, you are determining um, individually whether you have a conflict of interest that prevents you from taking on a certain client. The same is here true too, um, true in this situation, but we wanna flag for you that most states, and you need to know the rule in your own state, most states have a version of model rule 6.5 that allows um, for um, much more limited, if any, um, conflict screening in a this limited scope clinic type of situation. Um, the things I'll highlight is that you are not able, if you know or recognize from the question that you represent somebody on the other side of a um, problem, and this may be um, I'm going to say if there's a VAWA situation or there's a, a uh, an issue between a petitioner and a beneficiary and you recognize one of the names, that's not a question that you should proceed on. And I will note, as it says on this slide, that we are precluding at the outset uh, Department of Justice or Homeland Security attorneys from volunteering on the site because of the likely inherent conflict with them being in the same agency. Other government lawyers, we are leaving um, those lawyers to decide for themselves under the ethics rules of their own agency, whether they're able to participate or not. But for you, you need to know whether your own state has a version of rule 6.5. And if, if it does, know what those limitations are and then you're free to proceed. Malpractice insurance, as you've heard, um, is provided for you while you're working on the FLA site and answering a question on the site. If you do go outside the site to take on a matter for um, ongoing direct re representation on a pro bono basis, as Jenny mentioned, then the malpractice insurance that the ABA provides you comes to an end and then you're operating under the coverage of your own malpractice carrier. Um, direct representation, again, you heard, um, if you may not use the site as a way to identify potential billable clients, and if you take on a pro bono case, that's fine, but you tell the site administrators and you'll verify then that you have independent malpractice coverage for that. Okay, next slide, please, Jenny. Um, training resources, this is another tab, and again, I'll walk through it in some more detail, but let me just flag for you what is, what is under training resources, how to register, and there's a little training video there about that, how to answer questions, and there are samples for you, um, navigating the site, much of which I'm going to do with you live this afternoon, CLE credit, how to look up your own state if you don't already know and find out whether you can get CLE credit for pro bono representation, a tool to log your hours, whatever you spend answering each individual question, you can log it right on the site and then you can monitor that on an ongoing basis or at the end of the year if you have a reporting obligation internal or external you can get that information. You have the opportunity to request alerts for certain question types. You don't have to opt into this, but if you say, oh, I want all um, student visa questions, or I want all deportation and removal questions, or um, whatever it may be, 
you can select that so that rather than waiting for you to go onto the site and scroll through available questions, you'll actually get an email that says, hi, there's a new question in your category. You may wanna check it out. Um, and the last bullet here, subscribing to categories, we'll look at these, but those are within the immigration side of the site, the various case, case types that you can set up as a filter. So if you're like me, you don't wanna see any business immigration questions, other people don't want children, other people don't want consular processing, whatever it is. Um, you can tailor the questions that will be available for you to view to your own interests and experience. Okay, Jenny, next one, please. Um, the home page. this is where you actually review questions. I think this is better left to um, actually showing it to you but you'll, you'll see in better detail the way you can sort the way the questions show up or the way you filter out certain problems. Next one. And choosing and answering questions. Again, that um, you'll see it on the homepage where the questions are and we'll go through and look directly at some of those and give you an idea of different appropriate responses to questions. But the, um, the information for volunteer attorneys gives you a lot of guidance there. It talks about tone, it talks about length, it talks about when you might need to follow up. Um, so all of that in, in the tabs that are not on the main question page are there for your um, use. Okay, next one. Um, uh, the attorney registration process. Okay, we're going to hold off a minute before we go to the registration process, and I'm actually going to take you into the demonstration site. So here, let me share my screen and see if this, we go to the demo. Um, I have to go to the home. Sorry. Um, so when you first go to the um, into the demo site, this is what you'll see, and um, you're going to do sign in. And the uh, on the slide that you'll have in your um, slides, if you want to do it, um, you can log in here as the demo attorney. And you will be asked to verify you're still admitted and in good standing, even to look at the demo. Yes. Um, and here's what you'll see. So let me um, just give you a little more in-depth look at the things that I just talked about. And you'll see here, this is how you'll know from this URL that you're in the demo site. Contact us. That takes you to the site administrator. And this is... Um, Particularly, you have a technical problem or you have some other issue, either the website isn't working properly, you don't know how to answer a question, you know that there's some resource there for you, but you can't find it, something like that. So then you click that and then you'll get an email going to the site administrator and Jenny or I will see that. So that's just to let you know where the site administrators can be found. Okay, home, we'll come back and look at the questions later, but let me just show you. At the top here, you'll see your personal queue. And these are because I looked at these the last time I did the demo and I looked into two of them and said, oh, I might like to answer those. And, um, but then I put, which I'll show you, save for later, save for later. So um, I got them in my personal queue, but I haven't responded yet. Down below, available questions queue, these are ones that I haven't looked at yet or I haven't expressed any interest in. Usually there'll be more than one or two, but that's the segregation between ones you may have chosen to potentially answer and the large list of questions. I'm gonna go back up and show you here. Um, there are a couple of flags you'll notice. There's a red flag that will appear if a question is more than 25 days old, because remember at 30 days, it's gonna drop off the site and that person will not be served. So that's gonna show you those that are particularly pressing. 
Also, if there is a legal deadline that appears in the question and the site administrator will have flagged that there's a deadline, those are to try to draw your attention to those first. And then this open area flag is um, for a question that's more than 10 days old. And then this one returns to the queue in one day. That's because I have these sitting in my personal queue waiting for an answer. And that's reminding me as a user to hurry up and think about those. Um, so that's a quick look at the questions. We'll come back. Um, but that's where what you land on. Question history, here you go. You don't have any questions to show. That's because I haven't answered any on the site as a volunteer. So nothing shows up here. But if you've answered two or three and you click here, that'll remind you how much you've done and potentially the amount of time that you've spent doing it. Your profile, okay, this is not my um, profile. This is the sample one on the user site, but it tells you this is how you registered. This is your login. This is your security question to help you get back in. How long ago did you register? What's your license information? If you move, if you change firms, this is where you should go to change the identifying information about yourself. Let's say you change firms and your email changes. You'll go back to this to update it and continue volunteering if you choose to do so. FAQs. I mentioned these before. Lots of meat is here and I'll try to take you through it in a little more detail. You'll see here, it describes the immigration and the veterans platform that are so far available on the federal site. Who are the eligible clients? We discussed that, but you can read more about it here. How does the site work for users and more to the point for you, yourself? Um, this describes the um, asynchronous relationship for answering questions. What you do if you can't answer a question, even if you selected it at first, how you put it back in the queue, this representation, how do you check for conflict? So all the things that I ticked through earlier, this is where all the in-depth information on those points is. There's a little, um, on the real site, there's a video here to help you ascertain about conflicts. Malpractice insurance, again, everything that we're telling you in this webinar is here on this um, part of the site, including the rules about taking on a case outside of the site, navigation of the site. And again, this is quite detailed, but I just, what I'm trying to show you is not how to master using it, but to see that everything is here, including selecting a question to answer, and your choices once you choose it. And one thing here I didn't mention, you can't have more than 10 in your queue or you can't have more than two unanswered um, in that, that holding window. Okay, subscribing to a category, we'll walk through the categories on the managing subscriptions. And again, how to get at um, the site administrator or program manager. So I think that's the highlights I wanted to give you there. Um, let me go back up here to the top. Um, training resources, as I said before, how to register. There's a little video here, even though I'm gonna be walking you through it. Um, the one thing I'll flag for you, the how to register video, we hope to replace eventually with one specifically for the federal site. This is for the state specific sites, but there are only one or two modifications that you will see when you take you, we take you through the demo today. And there's also a little training video on how to answer questions that you can go to if you need. Site navigation again is here. Selecting questions, filtering questions, I'm gonna show you. Getting emails when questions are posted, we'll find under managing subscriptions. CLE credit, I actually want to show you this right here. Um, click here for CLE credit. You'll see the states in this bar on the left. So Arkansas, for example, it tells you, you can get one hour of CLE credit for every three hours of pro bono work. 
Okay, let's see, I wanna say New York. That's a little different. New York, it gives you the rule and it tells you one credit hour for two hours of service. So again, this is CLE credit. This is different for pro bono credit for your volunteering time that you can separately log on the site, but this tells you at your state level how you can relate the time you spend on pro bono service to your CLE requirements. All right, let me go back. Um, see if that's the, what I wanted to do here. Um, sample questions and answers. I do wanna show you these. Um, there are three or four of them on here on the immigration side. And these are not, um, we didn't put these here because they are necessarily perfect answers, but to show you um, that some questions can be answer, answered easily. I came to the US as a student a few years ago. I'm not going to school anymore. Now I need a work permit. Okay. It's simple to say you can't just get a work permit with nothing else, but it's up to you how much more information you choose to provide. You're not gonna be able to do a full intake on a platform like this, but you can ask, do you have any obvious basis you know, to, for another path to status, another way of a work permit, or you may choose to use some of the other resources to give somebody a link to other information or referral. Um, same thing, questions about marriage-based, some of them you'll see are more complicated. This is a question about how long somebody needs to be in status if they're married to a U.S. citizen to apply for um, citizenship, but they didn't provide enough information. I'm not going to read the whole question, but they didn't provide enough information for you to be able to answer it. So you can ask a question. What's the date on your green card? Um, similar things like that. And then if you get an answer to that in a timely basis, you can go back and finish answering the question. Um, question here about removal proceedings. And um, this is a useful one because here, this is an example of giving somebody a link. This is somebody that definitely needs a referral. They're in removal proceedings. They have a child, right? So here it'll take you a link to the Ian directory for the geographic area or to the court list of free legal service providers. So these resources are actually linked to a lot of things that can help you answer the questions and um, information you may choose to give directly to the user. Okay, now let me go back up. Um, log my hours is here. And that'll tell you what you have cumulatively for the year. And on this particular day, however much time you spent answering a question, write it down, submit your hours, and then you click submit my hours and log out or submit your hours and go back to home and get a different, um, oh, sorry, I accidentally signed myself out. Um, uh, take yourself back to, um, to the home page and the questions for uh, answering questions. Sorry, now I messed myself up here. Let me go back to this. I apologize. Um, manage subscriptions. This is where I wanted to show you the chance to choose categories. You will see that these veterans categories are here. Um, and Mary and Rachel at the end may want to say more about those, but on the immigration categories, this will show you there are quite a few of them. Deportation and removal, asylum, various types of green cards, including employment-based, work permit questions, DACA, children's, VAWA, naturalization, student visas. Um, this one for CRIMIM folks, impact of criminal record. Remember the person cannot be actively serving a criminal sentence. Um, they can be in immigration detention and they may ask or a family member may ask for them uh, about the impact of criminal 
record on their immigration case. So if you have crim -im expertise, this is a good one to filter in, otherwise filter out. And other is a broad category, obviously, for things that don't fit into any of these. And um, since this is brand new, these are the categories that we've identified for now. If it turns out that some of them get virtually no questions or we get a whole lot of something we didn't think about in other, we may modify the categories going forward. Um, but that's for now. And so if you want one, I should have said this, if you're like, I want naturalization, DACA, and TPS, I'm just making them up. You click that, then you put submit, and you won't see questions in the queue that are outside of these areas. Um, you can change that at any time, you control that, but that's what they are. Um, now I wanna clear them before I go back. Sorry. I wanna take these off before I go back to the site so I don't accidentally prevent some of them from showing up. Okay, so I'm just gonna go quickly here back to the home page where the questions are and show you. Um, the first one, you click on the subject. There is um, also a preview pane if you want that, but I'm gonna show you the whole question just to highlight some different answers. And these um, don't have answers here yet. I came to the US in the summer of 2019 from Honduras to escape the gangs there. I got out of detention. I stayed with my cousin in Baltimore for a while. I moved to New York in May. I've heard nothing about my case. What should I do? Well, there's a whole lot here that the person should probably do. Um, needs to deal with change of address. You need to know whether the person has actually received an NTA. You should probably be giving them information about the one-year filing deadline. So if you're ready to launch right in, you put answer now. And um, you can do that. Oh, I guess you can't do that. Or um, yeah, oh, here you can. So you can put your response, whatever in here. You can put a link, you can add an attachment, log your hours and put submit. And that means the answer goes back to the questioner. Or if as you're writing, you realized, oh, I better double check the date of that or let me look up a link for something, then you can save it as a draft. And that's when it's gonna go into your personal queue for you to come back and finish with later. Um, so let me go back to the questions. Um, this one, how can I get a work permit? That's similar to the one we talked about before. The person is, I'm, I, uh, I'm a student visa overstay and I need a work permit, what do I do? Again, you can tell them you can't get a work permit just with nothing, but explore a bit the various ways um, how someone can become eligible for a work permit and perhaps refer them to someone in their local area. So let's say you decide you don't wanna answer that, go back to the queue, then you'll see now it's turned up down here, along with these other ones that no one has answered. Here's one. I, I'm a longtime green card holder, more than 15 years. I want to sponsor my sister. How long does that take? Well, the first part of the answer, easy. Permanent residents can't sponsor siblings. But you see some other things to work with here. Maybe the person is eligible to naturalize themselves. Maybe there's another route for the sister. So again, you can think about how much detail you wanna give, but you'll see in the model Q and A's that it's thank you for your question. Thank you for coming to free legal answers. Um, some you know, opening comment like that, uh, a short and sweet direct answer to the core part of the question. And then you have some latitude to how far beyond that you go with extra resources, extra help or follow-up questions. Um, so now let me go back. Um, I think that's as much time as I wanna spend on the questions except to show you these features. Here, you can choose how you wanna sort them. Um, veteran here doesn't mean veterans questions. That means the questioner is a veteran. Um, which 
in terms of military naturalization could make a difference. Uh, the person may be over 65, which similarly may matter for naturalization. Importance of the question, that'll be a deadline or on the site almost 30 days, or you can sort them by the type of problem, um, which you'll then filter over here, right? The ones you pick. If you want deportation at the top, they'll go that way. If you want asylum filtered first, they'll show up that way. Whatever you do here, filter and apply, that's the way the questions will show up. Um, client details, you can filter by information about the client too. I think that's less useful on the immigration side than on the, um, I mean, less useful on the immigration side than on the veteran side, but they work. You can apply the filters if you choose to do that. So that's all I'm gonna do with the demo site because our time is running short. I want to go um, now over to the actual site and show you how to register. Um, this is the attorney agreement, which will show up first. Well, I actually should go all the way. If you go into this site to the home, you'll see here, if you log on and this you have in the chat, have or will have a link to go register, you'll see this, thank you for visiting, the site will launch soon. That means for users, for the clients, attorneys can sign up now by selecting volunteer attorney registration. So here's what you do. That'll take you to this page. You read through everything about the user agreement, most of which we've already discussed today confidentiality, um, conflicts, malpractice, you know that you're only getting it for the ABA for work that you do on site, you say, I agree. And then you come to this registration page and I'm gonna do it with a um, dummy just to show you, I'm calling myself a dummy, but that and um, make up a password. Um, and I hope it doesn't tell me I didn't match them. Okay, security questions you have to choose. Sorry, let me get this out of the way. Um, it'll give you these so you can get back in your mother's maiden name, whatever you want to put. Again, I'm making some up. Um, who you are. Okay. Um, I'm going to just put anything because I don't want it to kick me out because I actually already am registered. Now, law license, this is the very important part and the instructions are right on here. It tells you if you're signing up for veterans, you have to include your accreditation number. If you're signing up for immigration, you put AILA if you're an AILA member. But the first thing is your state abbreviation and your law license number. And if you're in a state without bar numbers, put only the abbreviation for the jurisdiction. So um, I'm gonna put DC and hyphen AILA to indicate that I'm an AILA member, okay? Then down here, you see practice areas, I, have not done veterans work for a long time. So I'm signing up for immigration only. My firm, I'm gonna just let this populate whatever it wants and hope it works. And um, we're gonna go down here to the point where, uh, what do I have to do? Bridges, sorry. Bridge, 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 bridge. Verify, let's hope I, oh, I guess I didn't do that too well. Traffic lights, try that. And this is the point where we're gonna stop the demo. After you filled out your whole registration page and you click next, 
which I'll do, but it's going to go to that dummy Gmail address. Um, you click this, and that then you will get a verification email that um, we're going to go back and show you in screenshots what happens next. So let me just click next. Okay, I did something wrong with the phone number, but I'm going to stop sharing, and we're going to go back into the PowerPoint. So Jenny's going to show us, here's all the written down directions. And as you see, you answer all the things that I showed you, law license number. Of course, if you get a prompt that I did that you put your phone number in the wrong format, you fix it. Then you click next, just like I did at the bottom. And here's what you're going to get next. To the email address that you wrote down, a verification email that says, hi, you've registered an account. To verify you own this email address, click. That means, yes, I really did it. Yes, I want to sign up. Yes, I entered my email address correctly. Click to verify. And once you do that, then, Jenny, what will we get next? Um, oh, I left, <laughs> I left out the part. You will um, get one. Oh, no, this is it. Um, we verified your account. I'm sorry, I skipped over this. We verified your email account and we're in contact with you. Now the site administrator will check your credentials and verify your bar admission and that you're in good standing. This should take two to five days and you will get another email. Keep an eye on your email box. Watch your spam if you don't see it in this relevant period of time. You'll get an email that says you've actually been successfully registered as opposed to we've verified your email account. So that's this one, free legal answers, registration is approved. Thank you for registering. Your registration has been approved, your account is active. It reminds you of the username you use to sign up and you can either, I won't do it on this slide, but when you get this email for real, you can click free legal answers and it'll take you straight to the home page where you can start volunteering or you can just say, good, keep track of that email, and tomorrow or on Saturday or whenever you feel like it, you go back to the Federal Free Legal Answer site, log in as a volunteer, and then the actual queue of questions will pop up. And I'll remind you here that if you register today and you look at questions tomorrow, you won't find any. But as Jenny said, we're going to start to open it for users as soon as we have um, a small number of volunteers registered. So we believe that in early January, you'll begin to see it populated with questions. And you will also get a reminder email that says, hi, there are 10 questions on the site. There are 14 questions on the site. And that's your cue to start looking at the questions and, um, and begin to answer. So, um, I think that's uh, certainly all the time I have. So I think that defines that's all I'm going to say. Um, I'll say again, thanks again for doing it. I'm so happy to see so many people signed up, enthusiastic, and ready to do it. What's next is please go ahead and register um, as soon as you can. Look at the demo again if you need to do it. Look at um, what you're going to get in the when you get your slides. You'll have a little roadmap, but please. Before you forget, you know, before the end of the week, certainly before the holidays are over, when you're in the giving spirit, think about going on, signing up to volunteer, and we look forward to welcoming you into the Free Legal Answers family. Uh, <clears throat> thank you so much, Karen. Uh, that was very helpful uh, to, to see it all uh, played out on the screen. Uh, before I turn, we've gotten several questions, and before I turn to those, um, you know, we will have some time. So if you have any other questions, please put them in the Q&A. I just wanted to make sure, see if Rachel or Mary had anything they wanted to add based on um, what Karen shared. Or for that matter, Jenny, anything I forgot. <laughs> I don't have anything to add. Thank you. Mary, do you have anything to add? I don't have anything to uh, add either. Uh, I think if you, again, are interested in also signing up for ventures, if you are VA accredited or interested in doing that, 
Um, and then have VA accreditation. I think you saw the demonstration, a demonstration of uh, what to click on and uh, it will be the similar process. Okay, thanks oh. Mary. Yes, thank you. Um, we did get a few questions, so I will um, I will attempt to answer them and then you know ask my uh, co-panelists uh, to help as well. Um, one question was, if you are already a volunteer on one of the state sites, do you need to re-register for the federal site? Yes, you do. Um, so um, please do so, even if you are already um, volunteering in the state where you are licensed. Um, how will the states and users in, this, in the states know about the FLA federal page? Um, all of the state administrators, the administrator for each state site, just like there are administrators for our federal pages, um, have been made aware that the site is, is um, launching soon. And we, we plan to be in touch with the state administrators um, to tell them about when we plan to go live. And state administrators are among the different groups that we plan to collaborate with to um, make, make the user communities aware of the availability of the site. So um, the people who are already using the state site um, and will be able to, to learn about this site. And you know, I, we should also add, for those of you who have joined us today considering volunteering, you also should feel free to let your networks know the organizations that you work for um, or, or, or colleagues that this site exists. Because you know, one of the things we're hopeful for is those of you who work, who answer the phone at your firm or your nonprofit organization and get these kind of questions, um, and it may be not what your organization does or it's not your area of the law, now you have a place where you can send them and tell them that they could post a question like, I have a sister and I have a green card, can I sponsor my sister? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we, we also invite you and ask you to please, you know, let your professional networks know about the availability of the site in early 2021, because um, anything we can do to spread the word among people who might be helped by the site um, is, is great. Um, Another question, do you have to be a member of the ABA to volunteer? No. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously we always welcome new ABA members and we would love to have you join us. Um, you can learn more about becoming a member on the ABA's website, but no, you do not have to be a member. Um, and you can, if you're an AILA member, great. As your question said here, we welcome you to join us. But even if you're not an AILA member, we also, we also welcome you mm -hmm. to join. Yeah, that's a big, we should say, that's a big part of the reason for partnering mm -hmm. with AILA because we want experienced practitioners who are able to answer the questions on here doing exactly that. And we recognize that, um, not that there are zero ABA members who do immigration law, but it's a small percentage. It's obviously not like AILA. So we designed the partnership on purpose to be able to offer the opportunity to lawyers who are not necessarily members, but at the same time, provide that core of experienced lawyers to the, to the client users who need the help and the information. So our role is a collecting role and uh, non-ABA members are definitely not excluded. They're in fact, through this partnership, welcomed. Um, there was a question about opportunities for non-attorneys. Um, you do need to be a licensed attorney to answer questions on the site. Um, so we certainly appreciate the interests of, for example, it seems like this person is waiting to be sworn in. Um, so I'm sure you're anxious to get started, but um, it, it's possible that you could work for somebody or assist somebody who is a licensed attorney and help with research or something like that to answer a question. But, um, and if anyone has any other ideas to share for non-attorneys, please chime in, but you do need to be a licensed attorney to, um, volunteer. I, I think Rachel had a, a, a suggestion on the veteran side. Is that right? Um, the only suggestion that we had was uh, maybe for on the veteran side, there's a lot of law school clinics. So if you're working with a uh, law school professor who is licensed, that might be a way that uh, students might be able to participate this way is, you know, submitting, for example, um, submitting answers to the questions to the professor and then the professor picks one and, and chooses to. Uh, mm -hmm. on, the, um, on the immigration side, as folks know, to enter your appearance before EOIR or USCIS, there are opportunities for law students, but they are just not eligible law students without 
um, supervision to volunteer on this site, but we encourage law students, law grads who are qualified to partner um, with a supervising lawyer um, to do pro bono work. And even some places now are having the, um, you know, the special, um, not only student practice rules, but the bar privilege, you know, the practice before admission. We are not able to accommodate that yet on this site, but definitely anyone who's interested in and is in, is in that situation should look for programs local to them, either through law school or local nonprofit organizations for places to volunteer. Um, there's a related question that came up in a different forum, which is um, for lawyers and law firms, um, is there a way to partner um, with in-house counsel, with corporate um, law departments or something like that on an activity? Well, yes, there is, but anybody that's providing service under the site needs to register. And if you're collaborating with someone else, that's okay. But remember, the malpractice only runs to the person who um, registers, signs the attorney agreement, takes the question. So be careful about using it in a some kind of large scale collaborative situation where only one person is actually registered as a volunteer. Um, we've gotten a question, um, why is there a restriction for people not serving a criminal sentence or not ask questions related to criminal law? Um, if any of you on the panel know why it was set up this way, I, I don't know, but I did you know, want to say care and clarify just to make sure there's no misunderstanding. You can ask a question about the criminal impact, the impact of criminal record on your immigration case and you can be in, in immigration detention. Um, you just can't ask a criminal law question or be serving a criminal question, uh, sentence. Karen, do you know the reason um, for the? I don't know positively. I think when the state site was originally created, um, which is the same reason a lot of large law firms don't provide pro bono in um, criminal matters. The idea is that if you're unable to pay for legal services, you'll get appointed counsel on the criminal side. So the idea here, it, since there's no parallel right to um, appointed counsel on the civil side, this is a, an attempt to provide um, at least some limited scope representation to people who otherwise have nowhere else to go. Criminal um, people with criminal cases or criminal questions who are unable able to pay for counsel should be eligible for public defender. And that's, just to clarify, that, I, that's the, I think that's the basic. Yeah, and to clarify too, um, as, as was discussed earlier, uh, many states are running the statewide. And so we are following more or less all of the, uh, the standards right. that the states are following too. And, and that's the standards that they are following. And some of them may be um, LSC funded, which also have criminal restrictions and certain data collection restrictions. So I can't provide more detail than that, but we are modeled on the, the state program. Um, there's another question about whether there are referral suggestions for nonprofits or private attorneys in different geographical locations. Um, uh, this, there is, and the attorney FAQ page that Karen uh, walked you all through, there is um, both for the veterans page and for the veterans portion and the immigration portion, there is a document or a page called Substantive Resources for Attorneys. And there's a link to both of those embedded in the Attorney FAQ page. And those there um, have information about um, both nonprofit organizations, as well as a link to, for example, the ALA lawyer search function where someone can go and look for an attorney in their area. And also if someone is told they're not eligible for free legal answers for some reason, um, and they, then they'll get that other places to find help document, which also contains lists of referral services and organizations. Um, but we're not, we're not, we make clear that the ABA is not recommending a particular organization or provider. It's really provided for referral per, for purposes of helping someone know where to look. 
that oh. um, Jenny, I didn't have time to do it in the demo, but that the other places to find help that is linked in the attorney FAQ, it's super good for you to use for information yourselves to find something that you may want to cut and paste or link to, to provide to a user. But that is um, also the information, as Jenny said, that a user will get if their question doesn't get answered in 30 days. But there are a whole lot of resources there, links to forms, links to court websites, link to detainee website or um, detainee locator, links to the court 800 number, how do I find out when my case is scheduled, all kind of substantive information, and I'm sorry I didn't get to this, is in that other places to find help that's there for you or to, for you to connect the user with. Um, Mary or Rachel, I don't know if you have anything to add about, about that question. Um, okay, well, we've had someone um, ask a question that they're, um, if they don't have a ton of experience in the area, but would like to volunteer, um, can they consult with a colleague before answering the question? Um, or will there be any buddy checking the, the, um, the, how, how people respond to questions on the site? Karen, do you want to respond? To yes, that? Um, there will be quality control on the site done by site administrators, but it's not, um, it's not able to be at the level that you can kind of guess and write anything, you know, and then, um, rely on the quality control to correct you. Number one, as soon as you put submit, that answer is gone, so, uh, you know, goes to the user. So the quality control is not happening before the question goes out and the quality control is not going to be universal. So I would say if your experience is limited, try at first filtering the questions only to the areas where you feel quite confident, maybe read the others, maybe take a course in, in something on some of the other topics, but try to restrict your answering at first to an area where you're comfortable. And remember you have that option to answer later. And I think this is what part of your um, question asked. Can you consult with someone else? Yes, if you need to double check a point, if you wanna confirm your answer, but remember the time you can hold it in your personal queue is limited to three days. And also that um, you can't expect a friend or a colleague to double check you on every single answer. Um, so I would say be judicious in the ones you choose for yourself, answer ones where you think you can get the support you need relatively easily. And yes, there will be quality control, but not pre-connection not pre with the user um, and not in every single case. So yeah, feel, imagine it as you're sitting in a room in a limited scope clinic, and what would you tell the person? If you have to go talk to a mentor first, that's fine, but make sure you can do it in a way that still allows you to give a timely answer. It can't be, you know, a week later with the person kind of sitting there waiting for your response. So the best I can do is keep analogizing it to a walk-in clinic situation. You can hold it briefly, but not super long. Yeah, and I do want to highlight too, this is also um, a great opportunity if you do, do see a question that you're not quite sure about and might require you to do a little bit of research. Of course, don't hold it for a week to do a research, but you know, plan time when you're going to do research. So this is also a learning act activity for, for some folks. If you think, I, I kind of know the answer, but I'm going to double check. I'm going to go to the website if, you, if we're talking about VA issues. I, I, I think I know what this is. I'm going to check with the VA website, though, to confirm my thoughts and then answer. So this is a great opportunity where you don't have to be off the cuff immediately. You have time to verify that you are correct. Right. Um, one person has asked if um, the ABA um, Hispanic Commission is participating um, in the site as of now. Uh, the Commission on Immigration often collaborates with the Hispanic Commission on, on a number of initiatives. Um, we haven't spoken with them specifically about this site, but we'd be happy to reach out to them and work with them in terms of uh, or other ways to try to reach out to potential volunteers or people who could benefit from the site. I 
I think um, the, the one remaining question we have is probably best answered in writing. Um, you know, we, we certainly recognize the enormous need for legal advice for people who have had interactions with the criminal system and um, who are not US citizens. Um, and, uh, you know, again, if, if, if someone is in immigration detention and has a way of, of using the system, we, we can answer their immigration related questions through FLA. Um, in terms of changing the existing restrictions on the site, that's, that's really something that we'd have to consult with people <laughs> a little higher up the chain. Um, but, you know, do want to emphasize that if someone is in a local jail, but being held by ICE, um, they, can, they can ask questions that are immigration related. Um, it's just they can't be serving a criminal sentence, so they can't be in criminal custody. Um, um, but otherwise, we would have to see if there is any way to change uh, that restriction. But we, we do understand the, the enormous need. Um, how will users be informed of this resource? Uh, well, we, we've done some talking about that. I don't know if any of you um, wants, to, wants to share some of, our, some of our thoughts about how we plan to do that. Well, um, you mentioned, Jenny, the state administrators. They're first on the list, and they're already aware that it's coming and about to be launched. But we also plan outreach to state and local bar associations, specialty bar associations, for example, the Hispanic bar, the Asian American bars, all of those. Um, we plan to do outreach to legal service providers through those um, separate networks and the pro bono, the Standing Committee on Pro Bono and Public Service is connected with them because we want them to know that they can um, refer folks who they are otherwise not able to serve in their programs potentially into this site. And then um, part of the way we're hoping to spread that word is um, we don't know whether the program proposals are accepted, but we have submitted a proposal to do a panel at the Pro Bono Institute virtual conference this spring and also to the ABA Equal Justice Conference where um, lawyers and uh, legal service provider um, uh, staff and management come together to share best practices, trends, new developments. So we're gonna be using all every networking opportunity we have, every, um, every conference, every gathering, every meeting, where as soon as we have the, the marriage of the volunteers and the live user site, we're gonna start um, pushing it out. And then, of course, we hope there will be some word of mouth as well once people start successfully using it. Absolutely. And uh, for this uh, webinar today, of course, we're educating you about how to become a volunteer, but you can also help by helping spread the word. Um, you are more than welcome if, if, you, if you'd like to contact us for more information about how you can help spread the word with flyers or posting this on your website. If you're from a non-for-profit organization, please do contact, contact us and we would be more than happy to help you spread word about us uh, for uh, potential clients and users who, who are needing help. Um, it seems like we've gotten a question in the chat. Um, if you're licensed in another country, can you register? You need to be licensed in, in a U.S. state. Um, and that, that's because um, you have to give advice on the site. You have to be qualified, eligible to practice before the relevant bodies, which is either the Executive Office for Immigration Review for Immigration Court or USDIS for administrative matters. Um, you're not qualified to practice there um, if your license is only foreign. So for the same reason, um, we require bar admission to the bar of the highest court of any state, just like the relevant agencies do to be able to give advice here. Yep, and I would just add that uh, for VA accreditation as well, you, one of the requirements for VA accreditation is also that you are licensed and in good standing in a US state. So. Uh, that is also a requirement to answer veterans' questions. Let's see. I think we might have um, answered all of the questions. Um, is I don't know if anybody has any any closing thoughts or anything they wanted to add um, that they thought of questions that were asked or or anything else uh, before I before I wrap things up. 
the ones I would say is send us your suggestions for how to make this webinar better because we hope to do it again in other places. And also through the site administrator contact link that I highlighted, um, tell us in terms of operationality of the site, what's not good? What do you have trouble finding? What needs to get made more prominent, you know, to be easier for you to use? We welcome suggestions like that as well. Sure, and if I could just add, please uh, feel free to spread the word about the site to um, potential client users, uh, just to reiterate that point again here. Great, well, thank you all so much, um, especially all of you who stayed with us for, for the full hour and a half. We're just extremely grateful for your interest and thank you for your time. Thank you to all of our panelists. Um, thank you for giving of your time and for being involved in this important project. Uh, the civil section of civil rights and social justice has other free webinars and resources for legal professionals and advocates that they hope is help helpful to you in your work. If you can, please consider joining the ABA and becoming active in CRSJ. You can go to ambar.org slash CRSJ. There is also information there about other free programs that they offer. So thank you again, everyone, and I hope you have a nice evening.